What's up, everybody? Happy, what's the date today? Yeah, happy March 14th. Hope you're having a, an amazing March 14th. What a great day to be together. Hello, hello, everybody. What's up, how you doing? Um, yeah, there's a couple things going on. I don't know if you guys know what's going on this weekend, but St. Patrick's Day is happening. And I didn't really do anything uh, in particular for St. Patrick's Day last year. And I'm not really having a class about it this year, but it's kind of a cool thing. Maybe you know what this is. You probably know what's going on because everybody becomes Irish on St. Patrick's Day. So we got this little hat going on. What's that all about? This man, you know this guy. And you know there's another thing that happens during this time. Yeah, people do this. People dress up like little leprechauns. That's kind of fun. Uh, we usually do that at our school as well. And uh, the most thing, the most common thing which happens is people drink beer. And I'm surprised there's no pictures of beer here because that's really a, lo <laughs> a lot of what happens on St. Patrick's Day. Kind of difficult to explain, but if you've, you've probably experienced it before. Let's say hello to everybody, shall we? Let me get out of this for a second. Let's keep that in the background. There it is. And you drink green beer on this day. So Lolly, go get yourself a green beer because it's St. Patrick's Day. It's another excuse to drink beer. Yay! And green beer. All right, and she is on top. There she is right there. Welcome Lolly. Hello from France. Carla, hello from Mexico. What's up? Carla with a K. Julian, howdy. Third place. Well done, buddy. Back in the game. He's getting back into back into form here. Uh, Brahim, what's up? How you doing? Uh, Judy is in the house. What's up, Judy? Denise is back. What's up? Missed you. Yeah, I missed you too, Denise. Get in here. Aisha, what's up from Morocco? Ooh, Morocco. One of these days, Aisha. I'm going to come to Morocco. It sounds interesting. Karina's here for the first time. Welcome, Karina. Amazing. Thank you for joining us. That's awesome. Uh, Edgar's in. There he is. Edgar's back. What's up, brother? How you doing? Uh, Panda English. Who? What is this saying? Oh, no, hold on. I skipped ahead here. Panda English. Welcome, teacher. I was waiting for your lecture. No lecture today, Panda. Uh, but we are going to talk about some pretty awesome, pretty awesome stuff. I'm excited about this topic because this topic went really well last time. So I think it'll be useful. Hey, Ahmed. What's up? Hey, y'all. How you doing? Yeah, thank you. Uh, they got some nice music on the internet. It's it's hard to find cool music on the internet because all of it is copyrighted. So you can't use all of it anytime you want. Uh, what else? Doot, 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 doot. Ross is back. What's up, Ross? Spider-Man's in the house. Spider. Mohammed, Floor, what's up? Gertie, what's up, Gertie? Gertie Cakes. <laughs> Miriam, what's up? Shy Bunny, must be exciting indeed. Green beer, yeah, drink it. I don't know. It's an Irish thing. See, see that beer right there? It's green, and I guess they just put some drops in there because it's... And you know, they do some other stuff. They, they do green... Check this out. Green rivers in Ireland. They'll do something like this in Ireland because it's St. Patrick's Day. Like that. I think that's, is that, is that in Ireland or is that Chicago? When I was in Chicago, they had these green rivers everywhere where they put a lot of dye in the river. It's probably Chicago. Or maybe not. I don't know where that is, but that's what they do also, which is kind of fun. So they, I'm not sure. I hope the fish are okay. I hope it's not that bad for the fish, but a lot of that will go on as well. Here we go, here's Chicago. So they do that on St. Patrick's Day, which is kind of cool. So that's it. That's all you gotta do. Go out and drink green beer. Uh, do, 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 do. Great, Karina, glad you liked it. Welcome back, stay for another one. This one might even be better than yesterday. Uh, hello from the Ukraine, Vitali. Vitali, how you doing? Elena, hello from Germany. Mmm, green beer does look nice, yes. Green German beer would be even better. Das gut. Wait, that wasn't German at all, sorry. Uh, green beer, yes. Smoothie, no. Uh, hope and freedom, yeah. Jerome, hello. All right, here we go. So let me go in to this. This is what I'm kind of excited about this topic because last time we did this topic, it was really fun and we learned a lot of new stuff. So let me, before, we, before I give you the document, let me hit you with a, with a question. And we've done this one before. Hello, Rosa, how are you doing? So here we go. Let's hit you with two questions at the same time. Well, actually, we'll start with this one. So number one is how do you sound more? Let me go to the let me go to the office and hang out with my people for this one. How do you sound more natural in English? Uh, everybody wants to sound normal, right? You don't want to sound weird. You don't want to sound like an alien. How can you sound 
more natural in English because there's a lot of vocabulary we might we might use. Where do you get that vocabulary from? Mm, so share your thoughts. Maybe you're maybe you've been speaking English for a long time and maybe you do sound pretty natural. Maybe you've just started learning English and you don't really know which words to use, how to sound cool or really natural. So give us your thoughts. Um, how do you sound natural, normal, normal in English? How do you sound like a normal Canadian dude or an American dude or an Aussie dude? Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Hello, Marjorie. What's up? Uh, so give us your thoughts on that and share maybe some wisdom, if you have any wisdom to share about how did you learn to sound more natural. Uh, let's see. So people are saying fluency. Yeah, but what do you mean? What do you mean by fluency? Uh, you just speak more and then you sound natural. When I say okay, let me let me qualify that. Sounding natural. When I say natural, I mean like using n natural English words vocabulary. This is kind of what I mean. I'm actually kind of talking about vocabulary. I'm not talking about fluency. Talking about vocabulary, like words, which words do we use and how do I know which words to use? So, Lorena, hello Lorena, what, what, what? The, I'm not sure, I can't translate that. My something, something caused, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Zia says, by living in an English speaking country, I guess, yeah, that's one way for sure. Gabriel, Gabriel, I'm good, how are you? Uh, Denise, using, there we go, there we go, there's some words we can use, some slang, some collocations. Our collocations are combinations of words that we use in English and phrasal verbs like wake up, sit up, be, uh, sit down, you know, whenever we use those. Hey Maria, I remember your name's Maria, because I can't read it. Uh, Lolly, using slang, yes, don't think too much about grammatical mistakes and what I'm going to say next, okay, so, so don't worry too much about it. Again, remember, I'm really kind of talking about vocabulary today, like we're trying to get natural sounding vocabulary, and that's what we're going to work on today. Listening to native speakers, sure, that helps as well sometimes, but I think you need access to a variety. You need a lot of new words, and you need to start practicing using them. Phrases, verbs, idioms, slang, all of that stuff is great. Ross, my English sounds like a book. <laughs> that's awesome. You sound like a formal book. Uh, okay, yeah, so there you go. So reading books can help. I guess it depends what kind of books you read. So if you read really formal books, you're gonna sound like a formal book in English. But if you read a lot of like, I don't know, maybe you could read some comic books. Maybe you could read some like, um, yeah, some comic books. That could help. Maybe you should start reading this. Maybe you should uh, dumb down, dumb down your reading and start reading some stuff like that. Maybe read some superhero. Oh wait, I don't have this on here. Let's do it. This is what I'm talking. Maybe you should read some superhero books. A little more, you know, so the vocabulary is not too much, but you can still understand it. You can still learn some new words, right? And you're not getting like overloaded with too much. <clears throat> okay, so there we go. So I think this is what we're going to focus on today. Uh, and we're going to use, we're going to teach you how to say the normal things that we always say in English, but in a slangy, not slangy, informal kind of way. So let's go and let's jump into this. Uh, so basically, I think the answer for today, the best answer for today was smart English. So nobody said smart English, so you all fail the class, you're all out. Today we're going to teach you, at smart English, we're going to teach you how to sound normal. Here we go. So open up this document, I will share it with you. Movies are good. Uh, so let me share this document with you, and you can open it up, and I'm going to give you a list of words. I'm going to give you some normal things that we always say every day, and we're going to change them, and we're going to change them to sound more natural. So go ahead, open up the document. If it's your first time, please open the document that I put in the link right over there, and you'll get access to everything we're working on today, and all the vocab we're going to talk about today, because I think it's going to be a lot today. So let's look at the first section. And you guys are going to, you'll need to use the internet. So basically, uh, you can do some research with us. Uh, and the question, so the first question is this. What are some different ways to say things? Think about casual and informal ways. You can use the internet to help you find some similar ways. Now, some of you guys have been speaking English a long time. So I know you know a lot of words, a lot of different ways to say these words. So here we go. So here's word number one. And I want you to tell me what is another way to say this word? I don't know. What is another way to say that idea? Because I don't think we talked about that one in the last class. 
So give me, yeah, there we go. So this is gonna get crazy really fast because that's what happened last time. So you can say, I don't know, or you could say, I have no idea. Now remember, today is informal. There's no tie, it's only party time kind of language. So we're, we're, we're not speaking to bosses, we're not speaking to grandma, we are saying, we're talking informally. So I only want the informal stuff. All right, so let's do this. So I don't know. Sure, that's the first thing you can say. That's an easy one. What's another way to say I have no idea? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. Sure, you could say that. That's a normal one. I'm not sure. What else you got? Uh, I have no clue. Yeah. And again, you can say I have no clue or you can just say no clue or you can say no idea. You don't have to say I have no idea. You can just say no idea. Okay. Remember, you're talking to your friends. You're not talking to a boss. So you can speak like this with your friends. So you can say no idea. You could say I'm not sure or you could just say not sure. Oops, let me do the other one. And the other one was I have no clue. Okay, so there's another one you can use. Awesome, very nice. And, and we have more, there's gonna be a lot. Uh, I have no idea, yes. Hello, Elias, how you doing, buddy? Uh, no idea, I can't tell. Mm, I don't know, I can't tell. Not quite the same, a little bit different there. Pardon, pardon is excuse me, so that's a little bit different as well. So another one you can say is beats me. And it just means I don't know. So if you say, Kent, who was the first president, the second president, the third president of the United States? I say, beats me. No idea. And I can use them together as well. Uh, okay, so that's another one you can say. You just say, beats me. And then it means I don't know. So that's another way to say, I don't know. And the other thing you can say is, mm, and you do this. Do below that. And it just means I don't know. And you say, mm, and then it's easy, right? I don't know. Beats me. No idea. Who knows? Great one. Nice one, Edgar. Who knows? So it's kind of a question to yourself. Like, who knows the answer to this? Like, who is the third president of the United States? Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, what else we got? Not quite sure. Yeah, you could definitely use that as well. It's a little, a little more polite, right? When you say not quite sure, which basically means you don't know. So it's kind of like playing, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm not the best person to answer that. I like it. I'm not the best person to answer that. Yeah, it's like, I really don't know. Why are you asking? <laughs> Why are you asking? No, probably don't say that. You never know, no, that's a little bit different. Beyond me, it's beyond me. Yeah, I believe that's right. It's beyond me means it's kind of like after me. I don't, it's beyond my abilities, it's beyond me. You could use that. I don't know if that's really Canadian, beyond me, but it's like you don't have the ability, <laughs> you know? So be careful with that one. It's kind of like you don't have the ability to answer this question. Uh, shrug, shrug. There you go, just shrug. There you go. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's exactly the same as I don't know. Uh, let me get back to you. It's kind of a funny one. Let me get let me get back to you on that. So you don't have to say on that, but it's an option. So it's basically like sometimes a student might ask me a question like, yeah, what does that word mean? I'm like, let me get back to you on that which is like, I don't know, I have to go check, and I will come back and I'll tell you later. So let me get back to you on that. It's, like, it's almost like, uh, and that's, that would be kind of funny if you said like, let me call you back. That would be kind of funny. I've never said that, but it could be funny. So you could do that. Like, Kent, what is that? They say, oh, I don't know. Let me call you back. It's like, I have no idea. That could be good. Uh, beats me, search me. I don't know if that, I don't know if that's, I don't use search me. I don't know if it's correct. Maybe it is correct. Search me. Could be. I've never used that one before. Search me. Meaning. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. How should I know? 
Oh, why ask me? It's a mystery. Oh, interesting. There's a few more here. Thank you, Google. Thank you for giving me more. Oh, beats me. Ask me another one. Oh, okay. These are pretty funny. How should I know? Okay. Basically, if you say, how should I know, it's kind of like, why are you asking me? Um, how should I know? Like, if you say, Kent, you know, what, what happens in a black hole? You know a black hole? Let me show you that. This is a black hole. This is a black hole. You know what that is. That's a black hole. And if you say, Kent, what happens in a black hole? And I say, how should I know? I don't know the answer to this. Why are you asking me the answer to this? So you could say, how should I know if it's like, why is the person asking me that question? Then you can say that. Uh, okay, so that's a good one. Why ask me? Again, kind of same idea. I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. Don't ask me. I haven't the idea. I haven't the foggiest. Beats me. Ask me another. Eh, okay, fine. Let's stop there. I think that's pretty good. Uh, only God knows. <laughs> yes. Sometimes, sometimes only God knows. Uh, that's a good one. I like it. Uh, only God knows. Basically, I have no idea. Only some it cannot be known by mortals. Uh, yes, they can all be used by teachers when they don't know the answer. And I do use these because sometimes students ask me a question. They're like, I, I have no idea. I don't know what to tell you. Google it, man. That's what I say. Google that. Um, okay. It's a mystery to me. There's a good one, too. Yeah, I can use that. It's a mystery. Basically, like, nobody knows. You know, like, it's a mystery. It's a real mystery, isn't it? Uh, yeah, there's no subtitles. So, Elias, maybe after we do this video, because this is live right now, so there's no subtitles, but after we do this video, I think YouTube has automatic subtitles that you can check out. Um, okay. All right. Search me. Yeah, okay. So again, like I said, I don't really use that one myself, but it's possible you could say search me. All right. Next, let's move on to number two. So here's the, the second word that we say all the time. The second idea that we want to say all the time in English, basically every day. Can you not do that, Google Doc? Just be nice with me. There we go. OK. The second word that we use all the time is maybe. So here we go. So here's word number two. Word number two is maybe. What is another way to say maybe? And again, remember, I'm going to try to keep this um, casual, informal, so not formal. So I don't know if I, you know, I, maybe I don't want to use possibly or anything like that too often, but we're going to try to keep it informal. So let's see what we got here. What's another way to say maybe? So again, maybe is like 50%. So be careful. Probably is more than 50%. Maybe is like 50 50. So we want an idea which could be that. Perhaps. OK, you know what? Let's just put perhaps here. Nah, OK, fine. Perhaps is fine. But it does sound a little bit formal when you say perhaps. It's like, it sounds like a formal word. Perhaps. What else we got? So probably is higher. I guess. I guess could work. Yeah, I guess. Maybe. Because guess could be poss possibly as well. Uh, I guess might be, hmm, possibly, yeah, possibly is a little higher. You know what? Mm, perhaps, I guess, maybe. So, do you want to go out on Friday? Mm, maybe, perhaps, I guess. Mm, you know what? I might skip this one. Let's skip. We're going to skip number two because I think it doesn't have, it doesn't have as many possibilities as I thought it did. Because it would be, yeah, you could say something like it could be, but I could go, uh, skip. Let's go. Let's do another one. This one will definitely have more. Let's try this one. So let's go to number three. Number three is this. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Fast, 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 fast. So this is something we say. So hurry up is already, hurry up you can say. It's already informal. I couldn't, I couldn't think of a normal way to say beef, you know, it's like be fast. 
but we, we always say hurry up, and hurry up is informal, casual. So what's another way to say hurry up? Chop, chop. So here's the one that I always say to my students. Chop, chop means hurry up. Chop, 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 like you're cutting vegetables. You chop vegetables. You chop, 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 chop. So chop, chop means fast. It means hurry up. You are slow. Go fast. Chop, chop. Uh, shake a leg, yes. Why shake a leg? I don't know. Shake a leg, like move your legs faster. So shake a leg. That one's a little bit old, but correct. You can say shake a leg. It's like, let's go. Hurry up. Chop, chop. Uh, ooh, nice one, Lolly. Get a move on. This one your mother would say to you, like, get a, you're late. You got school in 10 minutes. Get a move on, kid. Jesus. Right? So get a move on is like, go fast. So all of these have the same meaning. What else we got? Rush, swift, chop, chop. Ciao, Samuel. What's up, brother? Come on, you can do it. <laughs> no, no. Come on. Just come on. So if we say, come on, come on, come on, it's like, let's go. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. And we say it like that. We say, come on, come on. So let's add an extra come on. Come on, come on, come on. And that's how you say, come on, come on, come on. Let's go. Uh, let's go. See, when you just start speaking, things come out naturally. Let's go. Chop, chop. Giddy up. What do you say giddy up for this situation? Giddy up. Yeah, you can. Yes, you can. Giddy up. So let's take a look at giddy up, shall we? Just while, because it's fun. Giddy up is what you say. <laughs> What's going on? Is this Fortnite? That's a horse. Uh, giddy up is what you say this guy. If you've ever seen this TV show, giddy up. Giddy up is what you say to a horse. When you want the horse to go fast, you say giddy up in English. Cowboys would say giddy up. So giddy up means go fast. Uh, speed on, uh, maybe not. Step on it, yes. Step on it. So when you're in your car, you want to go fast, you step step on the gas and then you go fast. So we say step on it means put the, put the gas down and drive fast. Um, step on it. Step it up. Step it up could also be similar. It's like work harder, right? So if I, my students are being lazy or being really saucy, step it up, guys. Let's go. And uh, generally, they go a little slightly faster, not much faster. So step it up also means kind of go quickly. Um, what else we got? Step on it. Step on. Put your skates on. Hmm. Interesting. Put your skates on. I've never heard that one before. Maybe some people use it. So I'm not sure. So I'm going to keep it off the list, but maybe, maybe people say it. Step on it, turn on steam. Mm, not in English, anyways, I think. I hate when people say it to me. Yeah, I hear you, man. Go like lightning. <laughs> uh, do we have anything like that? Like the wind. We might, it might be an old one in English, we, but we don't really say it like that. Like, like the wind, let's go. It's kind of a combination we use with other things. Let's rush, gallop, shoot. Snap to it. Thank you, Denise. That's a good one. Snap to it. That's snap. So snap to it means like, let's go. Uh, don't take all day. Very nice. That's a good one. So you can use it in the negative. Don't take all day. Like you are going too slow. You're going to take one day to get ready. Don't take all day. Let's go. Let's do this and go. Hasten up. Mm, get cracking. Yes. Get cracking, get moving. Similar to get a move on. Uh, where was that one? Get a move on, get moving. Get. Uh, g okay, let me give you, oh, this one's fun. Get your rear in gear. That's a good one. Get your rear. So that's the nice way. There's another thing you can say. Let me put it on the document. You could also say, I feel like, did they take this out of my document last time? Maybe they did. No. Okay, so you can say your rear. This is your this is your rear. I'm pointing at my rear right now. So get your rear in k -k -k gear. So it's like a driving. It's like a driving one. It's like gear, 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 gear. Get your rear in gear is like let's go, let's do it. Move it. Yes. Get a move on. All of those very similar. Move it. Put your skates on. Yeah, I don't know. You guys got that one. I've never heard that one before. Go like lightning. Never heard that one before. Buckle up is like literally like put your seatbelt on. So it's not for, 
It's not for that one. Uh, only here. Or is it going to be today? Hasten up. Oh, I get you. Is it something we can say in class? Ross. Uh, is it something we giddy up you can say in class? Well, how cool is your teacher? If your teacher's cool and you know, then maybe you can say it. Like I don't mind if a student said to me like giddy up or some I don't know if they're telling me to giddy up or just said it to be funny, I would be cool with that. So it depends on uh, depends on your teacher. Mm -hmm. Press on, push up. Push on means continue, press on means continue. Like try hard to continue. So a little bit different. Get on with it. Uh, get on with it. Get with it. Get with it. Hey, kid, get with it. Let's go. Could be. Yeah, could be for speed. Get with it means same thing. Everything means the same. Pick up the pace. Yes. Pick up the pace means pick up the speed. Jump to it. That can work. Jump to it. Let's do this. Stop walking on eggs. Interesting. Is that a translation, Hisham? Uh, I don't have. We don't have that one in English, but that's a pretty good one. Stop walking on eggs. Hmm. Interesting. All right. I think we've exhausted that. That was very good. So now we got. Now you got a ton. Wow. You got a lot of new ways to say hurry up, or hurry up. Did you hear that? Did you hear what I was saying there? Um, that's only for serious situations. Don't be a turtle. Hmm. Maybe. Slow down. Next one, number four, is this. So the next category is how do you say, what is another way to say slow down? Slow down, slow down, slow down. So we have a lot of ways to say slow down. Number one is hold. Hold your horses. Hold your horses. So you have horses and they want to run, but you say, wait, hold them. Hold the horses. Hold your horses means slow down. Calm down means, okay, could be slow down. But be careful because calm down sounds like excited. It doesn't sound like fast. It sounds like excited. Retard is not something we would use in English for that situation. Relax. Mm, take it easy. Take it easy could be for slow down. Take it easy. But we, yeah, because some of them kind of have two meanings. Take it easy means relax. And I guess relax could mean slow down as well. Okay, yeah. All right. Easy. Easy does it. Easy does it. Again, we kind of use this for horses. We say like, easy does it. Easy does it. Which means slow down. Uh, wait a minute. There you go. Uh, okay, now be careful because the next word I have is wait. Ooh, they're going to be similar. Uh, slow down and wait. Hmm. Slow your roll. Yeah, very nice. Slow your roll. Uh, I believe it's roll with uh, R O L E. Slow your roll. Oh, it is roll. Oh, okay. Slow your roll. Yeah. Oh, but it's a little different. It says, what's the origin? Term used to inform a homie that he's getting out of control. Slow your roll. But I guess we could use it. We could definitely use it for slow down as well. Slow your roll. Whoa. Slow down. Don't push. Mm. Take your time. Take your time could be, could be good. Hold up. OK, so be careful because some of these we're going to use. And you can see the next category is weight. So that's going to be next. Ooh, they're going to be similar. They're going to be quite similar. So we'll try to separate them. Uh, chill out. Chill out. Relax. Keep cool. Keep cool. Maybe not exactly about speed. Don't push. Go slower. Take your time. Hold on. Hold on is weight. And we're going to put that in the next category. Hold on is weight. Outspend, no, relax. Hey, slow your roll, got it, yep. Uh, chill out. Hold your horses, take it easy. Easy does it. Whoa. <laughs> slow your roll, take your time, chill out. Mm, any more? I can't think of it. I'm not sure what else. I'm not sure what else there could be here. Anyway, so that's a pretty good list. Yes, hold on. So let's go to the next category here. 
And then I'm going to get you to practice. Once we do a few of these, I'm going to get you to practice. So here we go. The next word is, wait, yes, chillax. I'm mad you could use that. Chillax means chill out and relax. A little bit old, that one, but again, you guys are... You guys are not uh, first, you don't speak English as a first language, which means you can say anything you want and it sounds cool. So chillax, totally cool to say. Uh, so the next word is wait. Uh, what is another way to say wait? Well, we can say hang on. Hang on means wait. It's like hang on. And we can say hang on a second or a sec or hang on a minute. Both of those are good. To hang on a sec, hang on a minute. All right, so there we go. You got all those you can use there. Just a second, just a second, yes. Or just a minute, yes. Similar. Okay. Wait. Hold up. Hold up is another one. Hold up. Wait. Cool your heels. That would be more for slow down, wouldn't it? So let's put that in the other category. So cool your heels would be more of a slow down. Give me a minute. Okay. All right. So yeah, it's um, give me a minute. Give me a minute or give me a second. Yep. Same. Not so fast. <laughs> Not so fast, cowboy. I think you should put that. I'm going to put that on not so fast cowboy. That's better, right? Or cowgirl. Cow people. So not so fast cowboy or cowgirl because we have both. So there you go. I love that combination. That's great. Are all of them informal? Yes, only human. They're all informal. Okay. Um, only informal today. We want to give you some natural sounding stuff. Kill time, no, not so fast, yes. Wait a while, wait a while, why a while? Wait a while, wait a while. Yeah, because we have wait a second, which is a short time, and then we have wait a while, which is a long time. So anything after wait, yes. Uh, time out, mm, does it mean wait? It means stop. It doesn't mean wait, it means stop. So I think it's a little different. All right, what else we got? Just a second, just a minute, hang on, hold up, give me a second, give me a minute, hold your horses. Could be the same. Hold your horse. No, I think hold your horses is wait. Hold your horses. Hold your horses is wait. It's not slow down as much. It's more of a wait. Yeah, it's a little different. Okay, there we go. Hold on, yes. Hang on, hold on. Hold on. One sec. One second. One minute. Sure. Similar but different, right? Okay, cool. All right, so I feel good. Feel good about that. This one could get crazy. We'll see. I want. Man, we're probably we're gonna run out of time just like last time. Here we go. The next category is I want. How do you say I want? Now let's try this one out. I'm not sure about this one, but we'll try it out. So you're gonna say I need. I got to have. I got to have. I got to have this right now. I need it. I wanna. You could say I wanna. Mm, okay, so it's just slang for a one. Wanna. Sure, you can use that. I need, I got to have, I, sorry, let's change it. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it a little bit to I really want. Because I think that's what I'm trying. That's going to have more options. I really want. And we want it casual. So let's change that. I really want. What do you really want? I got to have. I would kill for. I would kill for a, for a coffee, a beer, a pizza right now. I would kill somebody just to get a pizza. I would kill for a pizza. 
or I am dying for a pizza. Oh, pizza is so good. I am dying for a pizza. I feel like we've talked about these words before somewhere in another class, but they're still really good. I'm in the mood for, so okay, let's try to do both. We'll do I want or I really want. Mm -hmm. So let's do both. Can we do both? I'm craving, yeah, okay, all right. I'm gonna separate them. I'm gonna try to do two categories here. So we got I want and I really want. So we're gonna have two separate categories. I really want. I would kill for, I'm dying for. Okay, yeah, because there are a lot. I'm craving, now be careful because craving is only for food. So you could say I'm craving something, but it only means food. I'm craving pizza. I'm craving a drink. Uh, I insist, no, not quite. Keen on is a little bit formal. It sounds like I am interested in. So maybe not casual enough. Fond of, mm, not casual enough. A little bit formal. I feel like, yeah. I feel like is a good one, and you can use it for anything. I feel like taking a break. I feel like a coffee. I feel like going home and watching GOT in my pajamas because the next season is coming up soon. GOT, uh, feel like, eager, nah, in, dire, in dire need of. That's funny, a uh, little bit formal. Uh, I'm thirsty for, I'm longing, longing again, pretty formal, looking is very specific. So I'm trying to just say I want, not I want to eat. I want to eat, I, we use craving, that's fine. I really want, I'm dying for, I would kill for, I would murder for, we'll just keep kill. I'm dying for, I would kill for, I got to have, <laughs> got to, that's funny, I got to have, mm -hmm. I can't wait, yes, you could use that, I can't wait, and usually, yeah, it could be anything. I can't wait two, I can't wait four. You got both options. Uh, I would love, yes. So really want, I would love something. So basically anything with love. Fancy a beer, I fancy. Yeah, fancy word, fancy is a fancy word for fancy people. So I don't know how many, It's and it's British. I think it sounds like slightly formal British. Could I send you the document? Absolutely, Waffa Waffa. Hang in there. Give me a second, Waffa. And uh, here we go. Hang on a minute. <laughs> Miriam, that's great. I would risk my life. I've never heard that before, Miriam, but I love it. I would risk my life for. <laughs> that's awesome. I would risk my life for a coffee right now. I would risk my life for a pizza right now. I would put my life in danger. I love it. Best answer answer of the day ding 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 please let me put that in there because that was definitely the answer of the day let's let's give respect where respect is due and miriam had it today you are the champion well at least who knows the day's not over we might have more than one champion but i really love that answer and what would be the answer i would risk my life for a cup of coffee let's make it super dramatic a cup of coffee i love it I think that's amazing. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, that's my new favorite thing. I would risk my life for something right now. That's amazing. Okay, awesome. What's the topic? The topic is uh, how to sound normal, how to sound natural, and probably cool in English. That's the topic today. So we're taking normal words that we always use in English, and we're going to teach you the cool way to say those words. Ooh, I have my heart set on. Is it informal? Yeah, I guess it is informal. Um, is it want or really want? I have my heart set on something, on a vacation. Does it mean want or really want? Yeah, heart is gonna be really want. I have my heart set on something, a vacation. I don't know if you would have your heart set on coffee, but uh, you might have your heart set on a vacation or doing something really important. Okay, cool, very nice. Yeah, okay. I'm yelling for? Uh, maybe not. Screaming, uh, dying for? No, no, no. 
We gotta go. I've always yearned to go stock car racing. Yearned, oh my goodness, that's an old school word. In this moment, I would risk my life. Thank you for using it, Gertie, amazing. Well done, Miriam, you did it. You kicked butt today. Next word is this. The next word is excuse me. Now, I don't know how many of variations of this word we have, but let's try it. Let's try it out. I've never, sometimes I just do stuff. You'll be like, what's Kent doing? Sometimes Kent doesn't know what he's doing and he just experiments and tries new stuff with his guinea pigs. So here we go. Uh, excuse me, pardon me. Pardon me is formal, right? You say, oh, pardon me sounds very formal. So I'm not going to put it there because you know it as well. Uh, sorry, you could definitely say sorry. Like, excuse me, oh, sorry. Canadians are famous for saying sorry. We say sorry when we don't do anything wrong. Ooh, is he a nice one? I'm itching for, that's a good one. Uh, must be really want, I'm itching for. I'm itching for a cup of coffee, nice one. Sorry, apologies, yes, you could say that. You could just say apologies, not apologize. That's like the verb, but you could say apologies. Apologies. Uh, is it formal? It sounds formal, doesn't it? Apology, apologies. Hmm. I'll keep it there, but it sounds formal. Uh, whoops. There we go. That's what I want. Okay, I'm going to de <laughs> delete apologies. I want the casual one. Whoops. And I think the full expression is whoops a daisy, but nobody says whoops a daisy. But what do you say? That is the sound of making a mistake in English. Whoops. Sorry. Uh, okay. Forgive me. Okay, so forgive me. That's what I want, Ziad, my bad. My bad means my mistake. Uh, so again, beg my pardon, very formal, very <clears throat> So today we're not doing that. My mistake, seek forgiveness. Uh, <laughs> no, maybe not quite. Seek forgiveness, please. My bad is great, yes, my bad is good. So when you say, but again, um, I would say, these, because they are informal, you don't want to use these with your boss. You don't want to use them on the street with a stranger. When you meet a stranger and you step on their foot, you should say, pardon me, or I'm sorry, or excuse me, are you okay, something like that. But if you do a mistake, you know, with your friends in a really relaxed situation, then you say, whoops, or my bad, uh, something like that. Oops, oops could be okay. Whoops and oops, basically the same. Oops and whoops. Pronunciation, oops and whoops. A little bit different. Uh, amnesty, <laughs> great amnesty. I didn't mean it. Um, I didn't mean it. Excuse me, I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. N my fault, my fault. That's a good one. <coughs> my fault, just like, yep, it was me. My fault, bro. Yeah, sure. Feel free to add the bro on there. Uh, okay. All good. So not too many there, but some stuff, some good stuff there. All right. Next one could get... Hmm. I might skip. I might skip those ones because those ones could be big and I want to get to these ones. So I'm going to go and give you a different one. <clears throat> so let's jump. We're going to go to number 10. Thanks. <clears throat> What's another way to say thank you? So again, so let's change that to thank you. Thanks. Sure. Uh, my bad. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Sure. And we might use those two together. We'll say thanks. I appreciate it. Put them together, right? Uh, much appreci. Much appreci. Uh, I don't know how to spell appreci, but maybe if you say much appreci is like, I appreciate it. We say, much appreci. Uh, some people say that. I don't say that, but some people might say that. Uh, it means a lot. So sweet of you. Thanks. I appreciate it. You the man. That's for the bros. Uh, you the man. <laughs> it's kind of like a thank you, right? You the man. You are the man. You are the number one guy. You the man. Uh, you know, but you can say it. I owe you one. Um, yeah, that's kind of a thank you. It's a thank you that I will give you something later. I owe you one. And we usually use those two together. We'll say thanks, I owe you one. Boom, together. I owe you one. It's kind of a thank you. It's like, I will get you later. 
I knew we could say that. I will get you back. If you say, I will get you back, it means like, I will, if you buy me a drink, I will get you back next time or later. Uh, I will get you back means I will do the same thing for you. Similar to I owe you one. Same idea. Uh, okay. What else? Thank you. You made my day. Yeah, nice one. You made my day. Means you made my day awesome. So thank you so much. You made my day. Or that made my day. Or you made my day. Awesome. You are the best. Yes, you are. Good job. You are the best. You the man. Um, bundle of thanks. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, I'm not sure, but I like it. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Thank you 100 times. Hmm. I get what you're saying. Uh, maybe not any. Cheers. Easy one. Cheers. Cheers. And if you're Australian, say cheers, mate. Uh, so cheers. I use that one sometimes. Uh, thanks, bud. That one's kind of for dudes. So I'm just going to keep it. I'm going to keep it gender neutral. Men and women, everyone. Thanks a million. Nice one. Thanks a million. Yeah, thanks a million. That's. I think that's like the 100 thanks. Thank you 100 times. Shy Bunny, you can say thanks a million. Same idea. Uh, can't thank you enough. Yeah, that one's polite. It's not really informal, but you can use it. Can't thank you enough. It means really, really, really thank you. Uh, grand. Um, what do the British people say? Do they say thanks? British thank you. Is that British thank you? Uh, nine way to th say thank yous in British English. Mm, what do we got here? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, I, I don't know if it was ta or ta. Ta ta is bye. Yeah, ta. Dima's got it. Is it Dima? Is ta British English, which just means thanks? I believe it is. Can so I need someone to confirm? Ta British slang. Yeah. Okay, so it's also, it means thanks. An Australian, and I can say, yeah, okay, so ta, you can say that. But again, British. This one is definitely British. So be careful. Not be careful, just, it's British. So if you want to sound like a British person, then you can say it. My man. <laughs> uh, and my girl. Okay, so if you say, if you're just like, my man, yeah, it's like a thank you. And if you say, my girl. It's like a thank you. Nice. I like it. Shout outs. Mm, shout out is like when you say you want to say like, oh, that guy. See that guy. Everyone see that guy over there. Shout outs to that guy because he was awesome yesterday. So that's like it is a thank you. But it's a thank you. It's a thank you when you want to. Oh, do you understand what I'm saying? You wouldn't say if I, if I bought you a drink and you're like, shout out. That would be weird. <laughs> But if you shout out to someone else, it's different. It's like thanking someone over who's not in the situation. It's a weird one. Bless you. Arigato gozaimasu. Very nice. Yes, Raida, you could say arigato. Why not? Arigato. <laughs> Let's throw some Japanese in there. Arigato. Irish people say grand. Do they? Okay. Grand. It's like thank you. Okay, I, I won't put that one on there because I'm not sure, but maybe it is. You are so cool. Praise. <laughs> what if you said namaste? Namaste. I think it's not exactly the same, but it's more like a peace. Namaste meaning. I think it's just peace, isn't it? A respectful greeting. Oh, okay, no. But it, it's kind of funny. It's almost like a thank you. Uh, gracias. Yes, I can't speak Spanish, but yes, you could say that for sure. We can steal some Spanish and use it in there for sure. Coma, coma, o, coma o? What, what, what is that? Only human? Not sure what's going on there. Thank you for coming the extra mile. Praise. Praise could be funny. Uh, we could use some French. There we go. Merci beaucoup. Why not? Let's let's keep it international. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, man, see, just like last time we did this, we ran out of time because there's too many words. Next word is number 11. We're going to do call me. Uh, oh, it was Korean. That's what it was. Korean. 
Kumao. No, Korean. What is it? Kams no, Kamsamnida. No. What was it? Give me the Korean. It's a. Uh, what is it in Korean? We say thank you. Kamsamnida. Isn't it thank you? Anyway, or maybe there's another way to say it. Maybe I don't know Korean at all. Yeah, here we go. Call me. And you could just say that. Uh, call me. So let me keep that one in there. Call me. Give me a call. Sure. Uh, give, give me a call. Drop me a line. Yeah, that one's kind of weird. That one's kind of, maybe that one's not super cool. Uh, but yep, drop me a line works as well. You got my number. Oh, mm, rider. This is like flow rider over here. Give me a call. Holler back. Uh, <laughs> Holler back. Um, why not? Holler back. But it, Holler back is like, yo, it's like scream. Uh, I guess it could be for call me back. I don't know about that. We're going to keep that one off there, but it could be. Mm, ring me. Give me a call. Okay, let's do a few variations here. Call me. Give me a call. Give me a ring. Drop me a line. Drop me a line. What else? Keep in touch. Mm, no, that's kind of different. It's not for tele. We're talking about telephones. So let me put that on there. Telephone. Hmm. Okay. Dial me. Holler at me. Hmm. Maybe there's not a phone. Me. <laughs> phone me. <laughs> Waiting for your call. Okay. Uh, maybe there's not as many as I thought. I thought there would be a lot. Give me a call. Give me a ring. Drop me a line. Um. That's it. Maybe that's it. Okay, it's not the big category that I thought it was. It's shorter than it than I thought. Give me a yeah, exactly. Give me a ring. Give me a call. That's it. Okay, that's it. Next one. Next one is. I think this is gonna be the last one for the day because I gotta I gotta run away from you guys unfortunately pretty soon. Um, could you repeat that? So the last one we're gonna do today is number twelve, which is, could you repeat that? Come again. Uh, which is basically, could you repeat that? Um, say that again? That's another one you can say. Say that again. One more time. Yes, shy bunny. One more time. One more time. Like, tell me again. Come again. Say it again. What did you say? What? <laughs> what? Yes, you can say what. Uh, what else we got? More English, please. I don't know if I'd say that, but it's kind of funny. Tell me again. Say it again. Say that again. Uh, once again. What was that? There we go. What was that? What? What was that? That's a good one. What was that? Say that again. One more time. What again? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. And I think maybe that's it. Come again, say that again, one more time. Hmm, hmm. <laughs> Pardon? I didn't understand. Uh, I didn't catch that. I didn't catch, catch. I didn't catch that. Could you, could you repeat that? So, could you, could you is more polite, so we say, so that would be the normal one. This is all Greek to me. Uh, I think that means you can't understand. It's not like you didn't hear, but it's like you can't understand. Huh? Good American one. What was the last point? No, not quite. Not quite. Okay, I will do that. Okay, so here we go. Before I leave, let's do one more thing. So I have some situations for you. So I'm going to give you that document one more time. So here we go. And what we're going to do, I got a couple situations. So here we go. This is what I'd like you guys to do. I, I'm going to try. I might make one more lesson like this because these lessons tend to be pretty awesome. So this is the second time. We've done this lesson before, so you can go check the old, old streams that we did. I think it's called I Can Recognize Informal English Part 1. And uh, it's all this stuff, which is pretty useful. 
so here we go. What we're going to do, just with the last little bit of time, I'm going to give you a situation. So now read the following situations. I would like you to give a reply using today's vocabulary. Uh, and be sure to sound cool. So here we go. So I would like you to read the situation, and then I would like you to give a reply using anything we learned today. So here's number one. Number one is quite a common situation. So you are a guy. You are a guy. And your best male friend asks you, what do, can, what do women want? And you say, so all my guys, what do women want? Please give me an answer, something you learned today. I don't know. You, you, you do, sometimes you do what you don't know. So I think the answer was, I'm waiting for the answer. What do women kill themselves for? <laughs> no, not that one. Uh, I don't think it's that one. It's beyond me. Exactly. What else? Share. Come on, get it out there. What do, someone says, someone asks you, they're like, man, I don't know. What, what do women want? You say, when you know, give me a ring. <laughs> yeah, sure. When you find out, you tell me. You call me, man. When you figure out what women want, give me a call and tell me because I need to know. Uh, women like guy, chill guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so I, th I think the answer here, guys, where, where are my guys at? What was the answer here? I think the answer was, I have no idea, or I haven't the foggiest, or beats me, or something like that. No, I thought that was, I thought that was a funny, clear answer for this question. You are a guy, and another guy asks you, what do women want? And you say, I have no idea. Now, that's not totally true, but it's just kind of funny, right? <laughs> Some people are giving real answers here. Well, I appreciate that if you're giving a real answer. I was just trying to practice English, but uh, it's funny. Uh, women are, maybe some people are giving real answers. So you want people who love and respect you. I understand. Don't bother me, please. Huh? <laughs> okay. Never mind. I tried to do that, and that didn't work out at all. So let me go on to the next one. That's what I wanted. I have no clue, that kind of thing. Only God knows I don't have a clue. Thank you so much. That's the joke I was trying to make. And you guys, thank you so much for that. All right. Here we go. Next. Totally different category. So Superman flies down. Superman flies down and saves you, saves your life just before you are crushed by a falling building. You know Superman always does that. What do you say to Superman? Use something you've learned today. Oh, let me get back to you. That was a good one. Good one, Gertie. Let me get back to you. Okay, uh, so s let's go on to number three because my number one failed miserably. Number three, Superman. So Superman flies down and saves your life just before you are crushed by a building, what do you say? Okay, yes, you could say, I love you, Superman. Yes, that would be very nice. Uh, I think you would say, you demand, Superman, or something like, or thanks a million, Superman. You made my day. No, you saved my life. It's a little bit stronger than you made my day. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Arigato gozaimasu. Cheers. I guess it's gotta be strong. I owe you one. I will save your life next time. Not too sure that's going to work out. Okay. Anyways, my phone's going off, which tells me I have to run because I got a busy day today. So I hope you go it. You, you guys <laughs> enjoyed that. Uh, thanks a million for hanging out. I hope you guys enjoyed learning some real natural sounding English because we use this stuff all the time. And it's another way for you to sound cool, informal, all that stuff. So I think because I always have leftovers when we do this class, we're going to have to do another class to look at some other words that we haven't done. That's it. Get out of here. Class is over. You owe me nothing, Luis. You just owe me some... Uh, you owe me nothing, man. I'm here. I'm here for you. That's it for me, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. See you next week. Same smart time, same smart place. Wednesday at 2 p.m., Thursday at 2 p.m. All of this is Vancouver time. You're the best. Cheers. Thanks a million. Ta, my men, my women. Catch you next week. Have a great weekend. Hugs, kiss. Bye-bye.